Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the routing process for one of my latest development boards, which is the Candy 2. It's a PIC 18F 25K80 based development board that's mainly targeted towards automotive CAN bus interfaces. Uh, so this is a pretty simple board, as I mentioned, it's, it's just a PIC 18F uh, 25K80, a MCP 2551 CAN transceiver, a linear uh, voltage regulator, as well as some other peripheral components for the microcontroller, such as a crystal oscillator, reset switch, uh, several passive components, uh, as well as a UART connector for uh, interfacing with a basic UART interface for like a PC or something like that, uh, as well as a uh, in-circuit serial programming header, which is towards the top of the board right here. So the main focus of this video is going to be on the routing side of the PCB. Prior to this, obviously, I've put in a lot of work as far as, you know, the the actual board outline as well as uh, you know, component placement. Um, most of these components have just been placed logically, obviously, you know, uh, if, if this pin has to connect to this pin, I'm going to place it pretty close to that. Um, but there was a lot of back and forth, you know, kind of figuring out what's the best uh, component placement, and that's where you're going to spend a lot of time, especially when you're designing uh, PCBs like this. It's, it's going to be just placing the components in, you know, a, a way that's logical, where you think you'll probably get the best route possible. Uh, other than that, I've also done a good amount of work on the schematic capture. So as you can see, you know, I've kind of organized it a little bit uh, into different blocks, uh, as well as placed um, labels for all the individual sections of the uh, board. So yeah, the main focus of this video is going to be on the routing side of the PCB. Uh, prior to this, you're obviously going to, want to put a lot of work into component placement that will make your life so much easier once you get to the routing stage. Uh, so I think we can just probably get started. So I'll actually show you guys a 3D model currently of what the board looks like. So this is the current PCB. Uh, you can see, as I mentioned, you know, it's, it's a very simple board. There's not a lot to there. This is a very small board as well, or well, relatively small, I guess you could say, for through-hole designs. Uh, but we have the PIC18F microcontroller right here. We have a LM2937 linear voltage regulator, as well as our CAN transceiver, the MCP2551 right here. Uh, and you can also see that I added some information as far as silkscreen. You're going to want to put stuff like your board date, who designed the PCB, uh, in case I put my logo on there, as well as a logo for the uh, product if you have one. Uh, also, label any important components that a user might want to modify if they have to. This includes like jumpers or anything like that where they might be able to select a certain part of the board to enable or, or disable it. Uh, for my design, one of the critical components that I wanted to do this for was the termination resistor. Because on some boards, you know, a user might terminate their bus on this end or on this node, uh, otherwise they might not. So I wanted to have that be clearly labeled just in case the user maybe uh, didn't install it originally but then wanted to install it so it's very clear as far as their indication. Uh, another thing you might want to consider prior to, uh, you know, laying anything out is actually placing the actual component values on the PCB. So this isn't really feasible for SMT designs or anything where you have very small components, but for designs like this I really like to do it, especially when you have these you know, very large through-hole components. It makes it so much easier uh, for assembly as well as you know, service, let's say you know, five years down the line, the person that's using this board can't find the schematic, uh, darn this capacitor or whatever has failed, you know, it's, it's damaged, I need to replace it. You can clearly look under that component and see in the silk screen what value it is. So you can see I've done that to all the components on the PCB here. Uh, this also makes it very easy for assembly as well. You don't need a schematic in front of you to assemble the board. You can just physically look at the uh, PCB silk screen. So other than that, we also enabled, or sorry, labeled some of our connectors here. We have our UART connector as well as our in-circuit serial programming header. Uh, then we also labeled the main input pins on this screw terminal connector. So we have ground, CAN negative, uh, CAN positive, as well as our 12 volt input. And then we have labels for our LEDs. And we also have pin labels for the headers underneath here. Uh, it was very hard to fit them up top, so I figured I'd just put them on the bottom. They would probably be easier to read as well. And then I plan to order PCBs for this design through GLC PCB, so I wanted them to uh, place my order number in this area, so I've done that here by indicating um, their requested uh, characters. So. Okay, now that I've kind of introduced the PCB and some of the design challenges that we might face, I figure we could probably just go into routing. So let's get started. So we're going to want to start first by routing out any high speed signals as well as any critical signals for the PCB. In my case, the only thing I really have on here that's super critical is the CAN bus input signals as well as our crystal oscillator traces. So we're going to want to get those routed out first to make sure they're as short as possible. 
From there, you can kind of move on to whatever's next in line as far as being most critical on the PCB. In my case, that's going to be the 5 volt rail, uh, out, which is going to be the output of our regulator, as well as the 12 volt input to the regulator. You also notice that these traces are much thicker than the other 10 mil traces on the PCB. That's because you want to decrease the impedance of these traces as much as possible, uh, especially because they're going to be relatively high current compared to the rest of the uh, PCB. So you can see me routing that 5 volt rail all the way around the board to each of the individual ICs as well as their respective decoupling capacitors. And once you have those traces, you can kind of move on to whatever's next in line again as far as being most critical. In my case, there isn't, really isn't that many traces on this PCB that are super critical as far as their length. So, so you can kind of just jump around and do whatever you see fit. In my case, I'm moving on to the onboard LED indication, which is going to be our power LED as well as a status LED. You'll notice that everything else is pretty much 10 mil across the board as far as trace width. The only thing that's really thicker is going to be our power supply traces. And you'll also see me kind of moving traces around and manipulating them to try to make uh, routing around certain components as uh, clean as possible. And this is something you'll just have to mess around with until you can kind of find a good way to route a trace. Is just moving other traces around it, you know, and kind of manip manipulating them until you can get the cleanest route possible. In my case, I'm just trying to move these CAN bus, uh, the output of our transceiver, over as much as possible to try to clear our uh, voltage regulator, the tab of it. And I'm looking at the PCB in 3D, just making sure everything kind of lines up well. And next I'll move on to routing the TX and RX lines of our UART interface, which will be going over to that um, header, the 2.54 millimeter header off to the side of the PCB. This is going to be for setting up just a basic uh, you know, serial debugging interface if you want to have uh, with uh, using like an FTDI cable or something to connect it to a COM port on a laptop or PC. Again, looking at the PC, PCB in 3D, just making sure everything looks all right grabbing some coffee <laughs> and once that's completed I'm gonna move on to the programming header and this was the only part of the PCB that was kind of a little bit difficult I had to decide to eventually route these traces on the bottom layer you can see kind of on the top layer they would obviously interfere with that 5 volt trace and this is something you're gonna encounter as you're designing a PCB where you have to decide as far as which trace is more critical which which should have a cleaner route essentially and in my case I ended up sacrificing some of our uh, bottom layer the ground plane uh, for routing those traces down there rather than having to break up that 5 volt uh, power trace which was obviously a little less critical compared to the uh, rather low speed programming interface through a picket or whatever I plan to use for this device And also you'll notice that the color changed as I routed these traces because they are on the bottom layer, not the top layer. So there you can see them. It's going to cut into our ground plane a little bit, but it's at such an odd spot it shouldn't really matter. Next I'm moving on to teardrops, which are kind of going to generate a little curve onto the edge of your traces as they connect to a pad. This will make that connection much cleaner, much better. Uh, as far as you wanted to worry about any you know, traces somehow getting cut off during the routing process. Next I'm moving on to power planes. I have my top layer ground as well as I'm doing my bottom layer ground right now. And once those are in that's pretty much going to be it for this PCB besides some uh, VS stitching to connect those two uh, power planes. But that should be pretty much it for this PCB. And a short while later, we have our completely routed PCB. 
So this was a pretty basic design as I mentioned earlier, so routing it wasn't really uh, too terrible. Uh, the only uh, sort of uh, problem that I had was uh, routing this in-circuit ser serial programming header. I ended up having to jump to the bottom layer uh, to route those traces over to the microcontroller. But besides that, everything was pretty straightforward. I mean, you can look at the uh, bottom uh, ground pore and you can see that almost all of it's intact. Uh, I just cut into it a little bit over on this side, as I mentioned, for those uh, ICSP traces. Uh, but yeah, that was a pretty uh, quick route. Um, so not a lot of issues, um, as I mentioned, pretty simple design. Uh, so that's about it. I'm going to probably straighten out some of the silkscreen uh, and maybe add a few vias in some certain areas. But besides that, this is pretty much completed, so I could probably plot it and get it sent off to GLC. So that's about it for this video. Um, if you guys enjoy this, feel free to let me know. I'd love to do more videos like this. But other than that, that's pretty much all I've got. So thank you guys. See you later.